What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We're back at Dealers Auto Auction here in Oklahoma City. That's right, new video. We are back from vacation. It's time to get back to work. And I just happened to stumble upon something that's right behind me that I feel like is just too good to be true. That's right, it's an F-150 Raptor, a 2014 Raptor, guys. It's got custom fuel wheels, it's got big tires. Let's take a look and see what size these bad boys are. Fuel, reel, fuel wheels, it's got Nitto Terra Grappler Pro tires, and they are 325 6020s. It's got some pretty massive tires there, guys. Looks like uh, something rubbed up against those shocks back there. I don't know what happened with that. The downside to this truck is it's got a lot of miles on it, guys. It's got over 200,000 miles. It was used by a construction company, and your guess is as good as mine what it's doing here. Uh, I have no idea. This thing's probably had a pretty hard life, but get this. You can buy this Raptor for around $20,000. That's no joke. I've already pulled it up on my uh, BlackBook Cherry app. This truck, with all of its options and 200,000 miles on the odometer, should sell for right around $23,000 in pretty rough shape, which I'm going to call this one, this one's kind of rough. Um, the paint's completely peeled off the hood. It's, it's seen better days and it is pretty high mileage. There's a lot of scrapes and things going on with it. You can see it's got some dings. There's a lot of trash that you get to clean out when you buy this truck, so that's always nice. It's always fun to get a new car and have it full of garbage. Um, there's a condition report from somewhere. I wonder, let, hold on, I'm not gonna show you guys, but Looks like someone paid to have the oil changed and everything. This was 626 of this year. So they paid $86 for that. And then we got a condition report here that shows, actually everything is in the green. Interesting. Let's see how these seats look. Do they not just, oh, you gotta pull the handle. Seats are actually in pretty good shape. The interior doesn't smell too bad. It may not have power though. No, it's got power. A lot of a lot of garbage. Surprisingly, with 200,000 miles, this seat is in really good shape. Nice running boards. How bad is the steering? Not bad, really. Not bad at all. Let's fire it up. Got a little exhaust leak. Important window works. Less important window works. Do we have air conditioning? I'll bet, I'll bet money everything works in this. This was a construction vehicle, which man, what a cool vehicle to do construction in. I don't know if I could have used it for that because these things were not cheap. This of course has the 6.2 V8. It's not that 3.5, I think it's a 3.5 twin turbo that they started putting in these. And I hate that. I hate that they did that to these. These things, these things belong with a V8 under the hood. You know what I mean? They absolutely belong with a V8. Thankfully, the new Raptor has come out with their own new version and they've got a V8 back under the hood again. So I'm sure everybody missed it. Unfortunately, it's super expensive. So if you don't have six figures or close to it, whatever it costs for the, the new Raptor, then maybe this would be something you could deal with. It actually runs great. There are no warning lights on the dash, even though it has 207,000 miles on the odometer. No warning lights on the dash. It's a little rough, but I mean, it's still a Raptor, guys. And as far as the air conditioning, can I just turn it on max AC? It may not work. I'm getting nothing. Oh boy. Yeah, air conditioned seats. Well, there's the air conditioned seats, but it seems like the air conditioner is, yeah, it ain't working. It's on max and we're getting nothing, man. So, boy, that sucks. That's probably why they got rid of it. I'll tell you this, the air-conditioned seats feel relatively cool compared to how hot the truck is. Um, probably just a blower motor. I'll bet if you find the blower motor, which is probably up under there somewhere, and you beat on it a little bit, I'll bet the thing comes back to life. You've got your off-road modes, hill descent control, auxiliary lighting. Let's see what off-road modes do. Does off-road mode enabled, exiting off-road mode. 
That's all it does. It's <laughs> off-road on, off-road off. That's all you get. I think these seats are actually air conditioned, not just blowing air around, but actually air conditioned because my back feels nice and cool. Uh, there's an ATM card in there. That's, you probably don't want that uh, going with the truck. Um, sunroof, this thing's got everything. Navigation, backup camera. You know I gotta drive this, right? I mean, yeah, I gotta drive this. I'm seriously, cause I did, listen, I didn't come here looking for a Raptor. I did not come here looking to spend $20,000 on a truck. I don't need it, but I've never had a Raptor and how cool would it be to bring a Raptor to the channel, you know? I, I, so if I can get one super cheap, uh, I guess the trick is gonna be selling it when I'm done. How do you open? the hood on this am I just uh, there it is here we go battery is a Napa legend 7 to 22 listen to that engine listen to it man this thing purrs like a kitten <sighs> I love this truck I really do um, I think I'd get rid of my Ram for this it needs a paint job. I'd probably send it in for a paint job. Let me grab my Gatorade real quick. We're gonna take this thing for a, for a little spin. I wanna make sure the transmission shifts through the gears like it's supposed to and everything. Tires look good. We'll see how it steers. Uh, I'm not just filming this one to film it, guys. Like I'm genuinely thinking about getting this for 20, 23 grand. I think I'm gonna do it. Now with that said, I can't guarantee that it's going to sell for $23,000. Nobody can tell you what a car is gonna bring at the auction. It might bring less. Ooh. Ugh, I think these tires and wheels are way too big for this truck. That's what I think. I think it looked great with the stock wheels, but you know, to each their own. Steering wheel so far appears to be straight. It's in too high. Let's see if we can whip it around here. Um, again, I can't accurately predict what it's going to bring at auction, but when I use my, my Black Book Cherry, it gives me a pretty good idea of what I should be paying when it runs through the auction. I know I should be paying somewhere around $23,000 for it. If it goes for around 20, I think I'm definitely in at 20. If it goes around 23, I may be a little more reserved about it, but I think I could still, I think I could still do it. I think I could still swing doing $23,000 on, but if it goes any higher than that, I just can't do it. And then there's the other thing. The seller doesn't have to sell it. Like the seller has a reserve on this, which means they are not gonna take any less than X amount of dollars. Unfortunately, I don't know what the seller's reserve is, you know? So he may want $28,000, which is never going to happen, you know? People want way more for their cars today than they're worth, and that's a big problem. Let's give her a little gas and, uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shifts great, man. Shifts great, they're 60 miles an hour. This thing had no trouble getting to 60. Where it is gonna have trouble, I think, is this turn. I don't think she's gonna be able to swing it. In fact, I know she ain't gonna be able to swing it. <laughs> not, not a chance. Oh, we'll do a little, uh, we'll do a little three-point turn here. Love that backup camera. It's nice and big. Um, I do want to try out four-wheel drive as well. I rarely use it in my own truck, but it's one of those things where uh, let's put it in neutral. Uh, it's one of those things that you want it to work. So four by four shift is in progress and shift delayed, pull forward. Oh crap, yes, it works. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's put it back in two wheel drive. That was violent. Good Lord, that was violent. Pull forward. There we go, okay. <laughs> that was, uh, that was a little violent, but that's fine. All I care about is that it works. If I were to buy this, I'd probably want to go back with like factory factory wheels on it. Um, so far, everything on the dash looks good. 
not a problem at all. I am curious though, uh, trip 11.8 miles a gallon over the last, what, 2,056 miles, 11.8. Um, yeah, all right, let's give her a little throttle. Like I said, getting to 60 miles an hour is not a problem on this track. Not a problem at all. Definitely kind of a downer that there's no air conditioning, but um, the truck actually rides really well, even with these, 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 I, I know that it's all personal preference. I'm not trying to knock whoever owned the truck at all. That's not what I'm here to do. It's whatever, man, it's personal preference. But it's just for me, I, I don't have any interest in these ginormous wheels and tires. I'd, I'd really like to go back with factory. So that's something that I'm going to have to take into consideration when I'm bidding on it. I'm going to have to go on eBay, look around on Facebook Marketplace, and see if I can find any OEM Raptor wheels and tires for sale. Um, because that's going to cost me some money. I think I just passed my spot. Anyway, the truck runs and drives exactly like it should. Got to fix that air conditioning. Probably just a blower motor. I hate saying that because you never know for sure. Hell, it could just be a fuse, right? It could just be a fuse. But it's just another one of those things we gotta take into consideration when we're putting our bids in on this truck. I'm gonna tell you right now, if this goes for a decent price, a fair price, I'm buying this, I'm gonna bring this to the channel because I absolutely love it and I don't care about the mileage. Now I can't help it, I found this Challenger out here and it's the F8 green, it does have some hail damage, also got 100,000 miles on it. It's also a V6 which, you know, makes it kind of un undesirable to me. Even if it was just the base model RT, I would, I would take a chance on a base model RT, but a V6, not so much and the hail damage is pretty significant guys i don't know how well it's going to come out on camera this green is a really high metallic but hopefully you can see it's got plenty of hail damage all the way around i mean it's really bad comes from a reputable dealer though it's probably a, a good running driving car windshield is shattered all the way up tires are great the car itself looks great except for the hail damage and the fact that it's a v6 Let's take a look at the interior. It looks good. It's that uh, it's that hound's tooth interior is what they call this. Um, I'm not sure why they call it that, but that's why they, they call it hound's tooth. I guess the little designs look like a hound's teeth. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't make the rules. It's a good looking car. It even smells good. I'll bet it runs absolutely perfect too. I'm sure it does. It's got a little screen, not a very big screen. Hell, it's a bigger screen than my truck's got. Let's turn that off. Yeah, it runs perfect. 100,000 miles, no big deal. Oh, air conditioning, thank you. <laughs> thank you. This one has air conditioning. Everything on this is nice. I don't even see any warning lights on the dash, nothing. I'm not going to drive this one. I'm not really interested in this one, but... I do know that a lot of my viewers love, uh-oh, does this not pop? There we go. A lot of my viewers love the Mopars. So, this is for you. V6 or not, I promise you, there are several of you out there that would have no issue driving this car. Me, if I'm gonna spend my money on something, you know, like this, it's gotta have a V8, man. It's just, it just gotta have a V8. For this kind of money, I gotta have a V8 under the hood, or I'm not interested. With that said though, still a great looking car even with the hail damage. Hail damage is kind of bad on this one, but it's not so bad that I would be like, oh man, I can't drive that. This is not a bad looking car. And it's, look, it's even got sport mode. I don't know what that does in a V6, but it's got sport mode. If you guys hear that engine revving, there's some guys over, over across from me that are sitting in a car, a uh, little, little Ford little blue or black Ford over there, and they were just hammering the gas all the way down, just letting it bounce off the rev limiter, man. That's the kind of stuff that's just like, come on now. I, I get you gotta rev it up, and there they go. You gotta rev it up, you gotta drive it, make sure everything's kosher with it before you buy it. Absolutely, I get that, but come on, man, you're dealing with other people's property. 
Are you serious? Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I get you want to make sure it's a decent car, but do you have to tear it up like that? And those ain't people that work here, guys. These are dealers. These are dealers. It's other dealers that come out here and just... Yeah, anyway, not talking trash. I was here to show you this um, before all that started going down. A Pontiac Sunfire, man. Unfortunately, this one's... This one's a little rough. Uh, if I could find one in good condition, I'd absolutely buy it. Even if it's a four-door, I prefer the two-door. But how often do you see one of these Pontiac Sunfires, right? Good Lord. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I can't make this up. How often do you see a Pontiac Sunfire anymore? These things are unobtainable. Okay, that's not true because there's one here, but you just rarely see them, man. And I, I've loved these little cars. I can't tell you how many Sunfires and Cavaliers I had back in the day. Uh, Sunfire is a Cavalier, same car. Uh, just a few different little looks to it. But I mean, overall, it's the same, same car. Let's fire this one up. Woo! Oh, it's hot in here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Uh, it didn't start, did it? No. There we go. There we go. Woo! Does that, the AC works? The radio is on, let's turn that radio off. The AC works, no kidding. It may be ugly. It may be ugly, but that air conditioning is ice cold, no joke. 151,000 miles on the odometer, guys. Brakes feel good. It's a smoker's car, it smells real heavy of smoke. It goes, it goes forward and backward. I mean, what do you want from it? A lot of cigarette ashes down there and everything. Let's check out the, the important window works. The steering feels decent. Man, uh, the car is almost selling itself to me here, guys. Listen, <laughs> I guarantee you somebody's leaving a comment right now. Get it, get it, get the Sunfire, get the Sunfire. Or right, you gotta be joking. This thing needs more work than it's worth. Sadly, look at the little 2.2 Ecotec, good little motor. That coolant is black. That's not even green anymore. That coolant turned like almost black. That's concerning. There could be oil. These things were notorious for popping head gaskets, guys. I mean, notorious. I don't think I've ever had one that I didn't have to at some point replace a head gasket on. Not that it's a big job, super quick and easy job on these. Once you've done them a few times, you get this muscle memory and you just never forget how to do head caskets on the 2.2. And I don't even think, I think I called it an Ecotech and that's my mistake. I don't believe they called this an Ecotech um, until later on. This was just your little 2.2 overhead cam, or no, dang it, it's hot and I'm losing my senses out here is what it is. It's not an overhead cam, it's the 2.2 liter sequential fuel injection. This is not an overhead cam. I know that, I know better. It's just, uh, it's hot. You get out in this heat for a while, guys, and it starts starts messing with your mind. But anyway, the car's got dents and dings, scrapes, bumps, bruises. This thing, it's wore out. It's wore out, and truthfully, the money it would cost to put something like this back together, you could just go and buy a really nice two-door version with a manual transmission and enjoy it without having to spend all the money and time fixing it up. Here's kind of an oldie but a goodie, a 2013 ML320. I love these things, I do. I don't buy very many of them. I've only had two or three on the channel, I think, but regardless, or it's a 350, I'm sorry. These engines were notorious for all kinds of engine problems. So I tend to avoid the 350s. And I know you're probably seeing there's a beautiful S500 from uh, Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City. Shout out to John over at Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City. Yes, we're gonna look at this, but it will be in the next video. This will probably be the thumbnail of the next video. Um, so I don't, I don't wanna spoil that. We're here to look at this. And if you're wondering why we're looking at relatively cheap cars today, well, I'm kind of on a new kick. I went through and I bought a bunch of expensive. They weren't really expensive, but I mean, $15,000 and you know, per car, that's a lot for this channel. The 1940 Chevy, that was uh, $28,000, so call it 30 grand, you know? I mean, I spent some pretty good money, so now I'm looking at some cheaper options. 
for not just content, but that's more affordable for most people. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. Oh, that sounds really bad. Here, here's the thing, guys. You know, most small dealerships and most individuals out there, they don't have $14,000 or $30,000 to go and buy themselves a car. But a lot of you out there do have a few grand, you know, $2,500, $3,500 to go spend on a car. So therefore, I feel like these cheaper cars are probably more realistic for most people. Even something like this, an ML350, yes, it's still a Mercedes, but I don't think this thing's gonna go for any kind of crazy money. I have no idea what the book value is on it, but why don't I check it real quick? I'm just gonna throw a guess out there. How many miles it got on it? It looks good, it rattles a little bit, but what's the mileage on this, 115? I'm gonna throw a guess out there and say uh, 3,500 to 4,000. Let's see if I'm right. Look, let's just say I was very wrong on how much this is worth. I don't know where I got that number from. I kind of just pulled it out of my hat, man. But I, I'm almost embarrassed to show you guys this. The wholesale value on this is $13,750. <laughs> Listen. You guys know I love Mercedes. I do. I mean, I really do. I really, really do love Mercedes. We're going to take this one for just a a quick little spin just to see how it does. Turns out this also belongs to Mercedes-Benz of Oklahoma City. And I know where to park it because it's going right next to the S500 that's sitting over there. Um, if I'm going to spend almost $15,000 on something... I like right now out of the out of the cars that we just got through looking at um am i gonna spend close to fifteen thousand dollars on this ml 350 or would i be better off spending 20 ish thousand dollars on a raptor i'm I, <laughs> I guess I'm just a V8 kind of guy, man. And I'm I'm more of an American car kind of guy as well. I do love the Mercedes and BMWs and all of that stuff as well. But I'm, I'm just saying for the money, I think I'd rather have the Raptor. You guys can comment below and tell me what you think. I'm not going to smash on this or anything, but I am going to give it some throttle. I don't... Ooh. You know what? I'm not going to I'm not going to give it any more throttle. We didn't even get up to 40 miles an hour, guys. We didn't even get up to 40 on this one. Um, there's something I, I heard something. I don't know what it was, but I heard something that was concerning, and it felt like it's kind of down on power. The interesting thing, however, is that there's no check engine light, so it doesn't seem like it thinks there's anything wrong with it. Maybe I'm imagining things. Either way, I don't feel, I just don't feel comfortable pushing this one. Um, and I wanna make it very clear. A lot of people think, oh, you're out here tearing up cars. I never come out here and tear up people's cars, never. I never come out here and burn out tires or do donuts or any of that stuff. You are absolutely allowed to come out here and get these cars up to speed. You're allowed to floor them. Like you absolutely can come out here and pedal to the metal. You're not supposed to be burning out the tires and stuff though, guys. The idea is to get it out and make sure the car's in good shape. That does not mean you go out and you start tearing things up. And I never tear things up. I just wanna make sure if it's something that I'm looking at, if it's something that I'm interested in, I wanna make sure for myself that, you know, I'm gonna be getting something decent. So. I just wanted to clarify because I don't know why, but it seems like every time I go out and I drive these cars, somebody's got to come back with a comment and they're like, you're tearing people's cars up. I'm not tearing anything up, guys. I am very careful with other people's property because that's how I would want my property treated. I understand if I bring a car to the auction that people are allowed to test drive them. I understand that they're probably going to be, you know, getting on the throttle and getting on down the road with it. And that's fine. I absolutely expect that. 
Um, and so does everybody that brings a car here. Let's pop this hood and see if we can hear anything strange going on underneath the hood. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this engine has been pulled and either really, really worked on or replaced. If you look up at the hood, there's damage up there and there's a lot of damage to the foam. The insulation surrounding the engine bay, somebody's been under here for sure. I don't hear any noise other than the direct injection. I assume these are direct injection. It sounds normal to me. I'm gonna give it just a little bit of throttle. Maybe I was just being overly cautious, but that's just the way I am with other people's property, okay? It sounds fine. This sounds fine. Yeah, okay, so that's fine. I was just being overly cautious. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Um, with that said, anyway, uh, when I thought this was a $3,500 car, I was absolutely interested in it. <laughs> I realized that this is a, uh, a 13, thousand dollar car i became a lot less interested in it so uh no loss there guys it was still an enjoyable drive um let's move on to the next now look what pulled up next to me while i was sitting here i was shutting it off and another is this an ml350 it's a 2014 it's one near one year newer it belongs to mercedes-benz of oklahoma city again and it's coming up for sale tomorrow with 171,000 miles on it i like this one a lot better and I think it's really the wheels. I love these AMG wheels. Oh, this is an ML550 formatic. These are not the same. <laughs> these are not the same. This, this right here I like. But if this one was 13 plus thousand, how much is this one? I'm gonna have to find that out. Ooh, it's got a big gouge down the side. That hurts. It's got great tires. Uh, we've got Continental Eco Plus cross contact tires the body looks relatively good let me pull this up on my black book cherry let me find out what this one is worth well unfortunately uh my black book cherry app has decided it's no longer going to work um so <laughs> i have no idea what this is worth i would bet similar year much higher mileage i would bet this one is probably worth about the same as that one, maybe just a tad bit more, but I wouldn't expect it to be worth a whole lot more. You do have the panoramic sunroof, which is nice. The shades work, air conditioning is on, it works. It is really 100 degrees out here. Heat index is about 106 today, so it's a little warm. It's nice and warmed up. I don't see any warning lights on the dash at all. Turn the AC on auto and just let it do what it does. AC does feel pretty good. I do want to pop the hood real quick and take a peek under here. I, I like this. I really, really, really like this. But, oh, wait a minute. What is that noise? Uh-oh. That's, that's not good. Oh, wow. Um, that sounds internal. That sounds like a lower end knock. It could be cams, but that sounds like a lower end knock to me. So let me just give it a little throttle and let's turn off this air conditioner. There we go. Now we can just listen to that engine. You know what? That does not sound like a lower end knock sounds like maybe a timing chain maybe a timing chain tensioner or I don't know it seems like it kind of clears up when you get up in the revs a little bit see you get up I don't know I don't like it though, guys. I think this is one I'm gonna, I'm gonna just avoid. Last on my list, guys. I think we're gonna close this out with a 2018 GMC Sierra Denali. If I can even fit through here, it's a tight squeeze. You got the power running boards. This is nice, dirty. Smells like cigarette smoke, but it's nice nonetheless. I think it may have some hail damage too. So far, the tires look good. The body's 
it's okay. Oh yeah, it's got lots of hail damage down the side here. Yeah, lots of hail damage everywhere. Ooh, yep. Busted windshield. This one's kind of rough, guys. This one's kind of rough. Let's take a look at the back. See what it looks like back here. I love the power running boards, man. It's got the WeatherTech floor mats. The leather looks to be in pretty good shape. I mean, it still could be a good truck for somebody. It's just kind of beat up, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, mm, and boy, the cigarette smoke. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, I used to be a smoker, so I can stand cigarette smoke. I, it, I can absolutely stand it. But this, this is that like smoked in since brand new with the windows up, ashing on the floor type of cigarette smoke. So look at 82,000 miles on the odometer. This is what I mean. If you look in there, you can see where people were ashing in the door. Same thing down there. There's cigarette burns and stuff. People were just dumping their ashes in the truck. Same thing here, cup holders and down there too. Just ashes everywhere, everywhere. You can get that out, but uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna be some work to get that smell out of here. Check out the air conditioning. Seems like it runs good. Now, I don't know for sure, but this truck should have 6.2 under the hood, doesn't it? I think. Wi-Fi disconnected, change engine oil, washer fluid low, fuel level low, great. <laughs> you can tell this was a very well cared for car, right? So someone took really good care of it. And here's another one. The last oil change, according to the windshield, was at Walmart, 722 of 22. That was a year, over a year ago at 58,000 miles and now it's got 82. So there's that. I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think this is something I'm going to be all that interested in myself. <laughs> Windows work, you know, I mean, it's kind of rough. It's kind of, it's kind of real rough. Let me pop the hood. Mainly, I'm just interested to see if, uh, the Denali's, I think, all come with six twos. At least in these uh, full-size trucks, anyway. Full-size trucks, full-size uh, SUVs like the uh, the GMC Yukon Denali. Let's see what we got under here. And the verdict is... It is a 6.2. Yes, it is. Well, great motors, aside from the horrible active fuel management slash displacement on demand. Um, and when these things are neglected and not maintained properly, uh, those are the ones you really need to look out for. So with all of that taken into consideration, for those reasons, I'm out. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. I wanna thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch my videos. If you enjoy them, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.